Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Time Out with Tackle What's Next, where we speak to athletes and executives about how sport has changed the course of their lives and the lessons they've learned in life outside of the game. I am Danielle Berman, the founder and CEO of Tackle What's Next, where we help athletes create impact and find purpose in life after the game. And thanks for taking a time out with us tonight. We are talking to Natalie Hummel, who is the co-founder and executive director of Every Kid Sports, a nonprofit we love. They are committed to leveling the playing field and giving low-income families the same opportunities to get their kids involved in sports at a young age. The objective of Every Kid Sports is to cover the cost of registration fees for recreational sports to help more kids benefit from after-school programs. Natalie helped start Every Kid Sports out of her passion for athletics and the positive impact that sports can have on kids. She played volleyball herself at Colorado State University. She has a Bachelor of Science in Finance and Computer Science. And as an athlete her whole life, Natalie really understands the importance of sport and defining impact, the and the defining impact, I should say, that it has on individuals. So I see Natalie's here. We're going to bring her up on screen, and I'm so excited to chat with her. Hello, Natalie. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you. Yeah, it's so great to see you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, of course. Well, Natalie, it's been quite the busy year for, you know, sports programming with readjusting schedules and trying to figure things out with everything going on um, in different locales. How have you guys at Every Kid Sports been doing? You guys have probably been navigating a lot of different regulations and programs being canceled or rescheduled. So how have things been going? How have you guys been been managing over the past year and a half? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been a crazy, uh, crazy couple of years for sure or a year and a half and um, we really took the time during the pandemic to uh, rebrand and to uh, kind of refine our programs and um, I'm really uh, happy to announce that we've actually opened our doors uh, nationwide so we're helping kids around the country um, yeah so we've uh, formed three major partnerships uh, that are allowing us to do that so um, we have a partnership with Dick Sporting Goods they're our founding uh, partner that's helped us uh, be able to open uh, nationwide. We also have an amazing activation with Under Armour where they're actually uh, have us in all of their stores and asking their customers to uh, donate uh, to us as part of the checkout process. And then we have another uh, partnership with the NFL uh, where we're helping uh, low income kids get access to NFL flag football. So um, yeah, it's been a tremendous year and, you know, at, there's been a lot of challenges with COVID, uh, a lot of canceled seasons, you know, a lot of redesign and, and, uh, but we've really just tried to take that opportunity. I mean, everything was kind of shut down there for a while and we really mm -hmm. took the opportunity to redesign our process, to rebrand the company, to kind of just work on everything, uh, for our, uh, program. And I'm really excited where we're at. Our team has grown substantially and we're just really well positioned to help a ton of kids this year so oh that's great to hear and such a smart idea to really focus on like building out the brand doing some things that weren't like contingent on local schedules and sports but like really being able to grow those partnerships and congrats on nationwide opportunities that is fantastic and i know that was a goal of yours um over the last couple of years which is which is awesome to see you guys reach that um and and I want to talk about kind of the beginning, not not even of every kid sports, but like your experience with sports, which I know kind of led to the passion behind creating every kid sports. So tell us a little bit about your own journey. What was your first sports experience, if you remember, and 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 what led you to volleyball? Well, um, so my very first sports experience actually was playing pickup football out in our front yard with uh, a bunch of older boys that lived down the street and. And I would watch them on the sidelines when I was a little girl. And one day I just went out there and I was watching them run their routes and I ran out there and ran a route and they threw it to me and I caught it and they were just like, oh my gosh, she can catch, you know? And it was just like, I still remember that feeling of like, hey, I'm good at this, you know? It was just like one of those things right away that I just knew like I was an athlete, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I grew up a tomboy. My parents and my sister were always like trying to make me a little bit more girly, but I was just like, I liked being out with the boys, rough and tumble. And, and I just, yeah, I loved competing. I loved that whole feeling 
um, my first sport I played was um, baseball and um, loved it and played competitively for years. And uh, it was really seventh grade PE class uh, where I learned volleyball. And I'd never really, I grew up in Southern California, you would have thought that I'd, you know, played a lot of volleyball, but they just really didn't have it at, for young kids, you know, it just mm -hmm. wasn't uh, available. And beach volleyball really hadn't taken off at that point. I mean, there was big groups of six or seven people on a side playing beach volleyball, but like what it is today just didn't, you know, maybe little pockets, but not the beaches I went to. And, uh, but seventh grade, you know, it was the first time that I got introduced to it and, um, I don't know, there was just something about it that I just, I just loved it. It was, um, you know, it was a true team sport. You can't play volleyball by yourself. You <laughs> absolutely have to bump set spike. I mean, that's what makes a great team. You know, when you can block and sync together um, on a block, there's just something magical about it. So yeah, I just, I fell in love in seventh grade and just kept pursuing it. So, but I played, yeah, I played all kinds of sports. I, I, yeah, I only played volleyball during volleyball season and then I played everything else the rest of the time. No, so. that's great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about too, like you, you already mentioned like a couple of keywords that, that stuck out to me. It was like the teamwork and, and some of the things that you've gotten from it, but what impact did playing volleyball and, and, and all the other sports that you, you played make on your life and, and who you are today? What, what do you still take away from your time playing sports? I think so much of who I am today came from playing sports and being parts of teams and being coached by amazing coaches and terrible coaches and being on losing teams and winning teams. And, you know, one of the things I really point to is um, that I think sports teaches you more than anything is how to handle a loss. You know, if, if your first big loss is, you know, in life when you're trying to, you know, land a job or, you know, something that's significant that matters, and that's the first time you experience a loss, that's a lot harder than having just all those little micro losses that happen in sports that kind of teach you resilience and teach you how to overcome. And, and, and then I think also sports also teaches you how to develop yourself. You know, you, you, through practices and through drills and through training and through coaching, you see your, you can actually see yourself changing over a season from being, you know, not a good base runner to actually learning how to run the bases. And, and I think it's really cool that you learn that and, um, and you can apply that to the rest of your life. You know, the, the people who are good learners and know how to be coached um, are the people who will end up on top, you know, they'll, they'll be the most successful. And even now I still have coaches, you know, it's like, you never don't have a, you're never good enough not to have a coach. Yeah, that's a great point. And I was going to ask you about what led you to, to creating every kid sports and, and with the group that you did, was there a moment that you thought, you know what, like, you know, I want folks to have this experience and, and what, was that tipping point where you were like, okay, we need to do this. We need to create something for this. Well, it was kind of interesting. I, I was on this journey. I was a, a, an executive coach. I was coaching clients and I uh, kept saying, Hey, I want to make a bigger impact, you know, because I can only work one-on-one -on -one with so many people, you know, maybe 20 people at a time. And, and yeah, there's a ripple effect, you know, when they are working with somebody uh, when I'm working with them, they become a better leader and it ripples through their organization but I was just kind of feeling like, gosh, is this it that I'm just going to be working with this handful of people? And, and so I kept saying, I want to make a bigger impact. And I, I tried a bunch of different things. I tried, you know, um, leading conferences and, and having a bunch of people in conferences. And, and I just found like, oh, that wasn't it either. Cause I wasn't really able to impact them. I'd get them all fired up, but then they kind of go away. And then, you know, that there's no lasting impact there. And so I was just on this journey of trying to, figure out what that meant for me. And, um, and through that, I met John Ballantyne. And John Ballantyne's the one who is like the original founder. He's the one who had the original idea, he and his wife. And, and um, yeah, I started talking with him. And, and as soon as he said like, you know, that 68% of kids weren't playing sports, the number one reason they weren't playing was they couldn't afford it. And he, you know, had this vision of getting more kids playing. I was just like, I'm in, you know, it was just like, it wasn't even like, I mean, it was just instantaneous, like I found my purpose, you know, and, and the more I worked there and the more we started working on things, it was just, uh, I started off just volunteering, you know, it was five hours a week, then it was 20 hours a week. And, you know, it was just like, I wanted to be there more than I wanted to be anywhere else. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how it started. 
Oh, I love that. And I think a lot of the athletes we talk to expect that they should already know what they're supposed to be doing, you know, when they graduate or when they retire from their sports career. Um, and they're like, okay, now what? Like, what is that purpose? So I love that you're like, look, I, I took this journey. I did a few things. I, I felt like I could do more. And this just happened to fit. I think hopefully it reassures some folks watching this now, watching this later, that it doesn't have to be like the moment you step off the field or the court that you figure out what's next. It can take some time, trial and error, things like that. But I love that, like, once you found it, it was just like, this is it, that we're doing this, this is what I want to do. So I think that's such a great, um, just story for people to hear that it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. And it takes time to find that moment. Um, it's not just like, step off the field, boom, there it is. <laughs> well, and it also took a long time for us to get to where we're making the kind of impact we want to make as well. Right. We were this small little, barely keeping our doors open nonprofit for many years, had very many lean years where we thought, you know, are we going to make it to the end of the year, you know, and just like, and, um, and so that, you know, kind of that perseverance that you learn from playing sports also, I think, played a big role in, in, you know, forming it and keeping it going and, and now getting to where we are now. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, that's a good point, too, that it's, you know, once you decide to start it, that's that's the easy part. <laughs> Actually <laughs> creating it is is where the challenges come in. Um, and I want to I want to talk about, you know, like the kids that you guys are impacting at every kid sports and maybe some of that example of, you know, how can athletes do what your guys are doing at every kid sports like how can they work to make an impact in the lives of other people is there opportunities for an athlete that's maybe in college right now or thinking about their next chapter to go out there and make an impact in the world of youth sports and and where do they start how could they do that yeah i think there's tons of ways that they can do that uh you know there's no uh there's so many organizations that need coaches and um, and a young coach, I can just tell you, I coach my my kids uh, teams uh, as they were growing up. And um, every year I tried to find a, a high school or a college uh, soccer player. My kids played soccer and um, that would you know come and join me uh, in coaching. And they the kids just respond so well to that. You know, I would teach the leadership and the character and the, all that kind of stuff. And then I'd have, you know, a young soccer player teaching them like dribbling and, you know, and he just like, he or she would just push them to be, you know, a little bit uh, better, quicker, whatever it was, you know, and so um, I would really encourage anyone who's in college and wondering what to do to find a team that you could coach and it, it, it you know, especially if you join another parent who's, you know, kind of the head coach, you can, you know, I, a lot of times my people that were helping me couldn't come to every practice, but I mean, even if they came to half the practices, it was a help to me and the kids loved it. Um, the other thing is, is we actually have lots of volunteer opportunities uh, where athletes, college athletes, um, and even high school athletes can go out in, especially if they come from a low income community or they their college is surrounded by uh, maybe some lower income communities, um, they can go out in the community and let people know about our program. Uh, the kids I really want to impact are the kids that don't aren't already showing up to a youth sports organization, mm -hmm. right? They're the kids that are really sidelined. Like they just, they don't even see it as a possibility for themselves. They know that their family can't afford it. They don't know this is available and they're just completely alienated from uh, being able to participate. And um, a lot of times who we're helping right now is kids that are already showing up there. And, um, you know, and, uh, but when I get to help somebody that has, you know, been completely sidelined and they get their shot. I love it. And, you know, a lot of times too, it's, it's a family that might have five kids and each season one kid gets to one or two kids gets to play and the other ones have to sit out and, and, you know, our, with our program, they can play every season because we pay up to four times a year per child. And so that's, that's also awesome. really cool. But yeah, there's a lot, I think there's lots of ways uh, that people can um, use all their skills that they've learned playing and and give back in a really meaningful way and um, I'll also say that anything that you do like that will really help you finding a job because the kids that you're coaching have parents who work in companies and have businesses and um, I coached my whole life growing up and my first not, it wasn't really a real job, but a really good summer job that I had came from one of the parents of the young girl that I was coaching. 
And uh, he, you know, was a call center manager and he hired me to be, to work in the call center. And it was an awesome, all my friends were jealous because it was just an awesome summer and Christmas holiday job, you know, and I came <laughs> expecting, you know, so. Yeah, that's great. And and I, I appreciate you sharing, you know, how people can get involved also with your organization. And I think where I where we don't necessarily hear a lot about is we hear about, you know, obviously these youth sports complexes growing and like how travel teams are picking up and it's year round this and year round that. And I think now more than ever, we need to be talking about how the fact, like you said, 68%, you know, I don't know if that's the number now, um, aren't playing sports because they can't afford it. And so that could be something that, you know, as a student athlete or as a professional athlete, um, regardless of where you come from, you could go into where you're playing and where you where you are and go into those communities, let them know about what you guys do, because I do think that's really important. And it doesn't have to be, you know, anything crazy could just be having a conversation with someone or, or going to a community center, right? Doing something yep. that, you know, could just make a difference in that one kid's life that is like, I had no idea this, like you said, this existed. So yes. I, I appreciate you sharing that. And is it still 68%? Yeah, it's actually worse for low income kids. So only 22% of low income kids are getting the chance to play. Oh so my gosh. That's 78% of them are sidelined. And that, that number has gotten worse through the pandemic. We don't have updated oh, sure. numbers for it, but it's gotten, you know, it's gotten worse. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I think that's really important to highlight. And I want to know when we're talking about, you know, how sports has built people up. Like, do you have a story from every kid sports that, you know, maybe there's a kid that went through your program and is now, you know, doing something amazing? Like, was there a success story or a, a success story oh. with an organization that you guys partnered with? Many? <laughs> we, have a lot, we have a lot of great stories, but uh, one, of, one of our stories that uh, we had a young gal who uh, was playing rugby and um, we helped her family be able to afford, you know, keeping her in rugby, you know, the last bunch of years. And um, she actually is the first person in her family to go to college. So she got a rugby scholarship. And um, we did this amazing thing. We did an essay contest where we sent out to all of our recipients um, and asked them to write an essay about, you know, what sports meant to them or what, what did it mean to get the opportunity to play. And, I mean, that was one story. But so many amazing stories, you know, kids going through a divorce. And the one stable thing they had in their life was their sports. And, you know, a lot of times when kids go through divorce or families go through divorce, the first thing that gets eliminated is their, their sport, you know, because all of a sudden the, the, you know, they have to pay for two households and money's tight and they, you know, right. all of a sudden can't afford it, you know? And so we've just had so many great stories of, yeah, just transforming lives. I mean, it really can transform a kid's life. And one thing that really drives me crazy about sports right now is this uber competitive, like it's a pathway to college and, you know, you got to start specializing young if you want to play in college. And and I think what we miss is all the youth development that comes from playing sports, regardless of whether you make it to, to college as a college athlete. You know, it, it's all about just all the skills and life lessons. You know, 95% of women executives played sports growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you want your kid to do well in life, I'm not talking about getting to college, have them play sports, and it does not need to be competitive. If you're paying, you know, more than like $300 a season, you're spending way too much on sports from my uh, experience. Yeah. No, it's a great, it's, it's a great point. And that leads me to one of my final questions for you, which is what piece of advice would you give to athletes right now? Maybe they're playing at a high level. Maybe they want to play at a high level about, you know, building up your skill sets as a person, not necessarily as a, as an athlete. And, and what advice would you have for them about the importance of sport in their lives? Well, uh, yeah, I think sports is just so important as, yeah, as I said before, character development. And, you know, a lot of times we gravitate to the sport we're best at, you know, and, and I'll tell you, I was actually better at softball than I was at volleyball. I was not a starter when I first found volleyball. And I think part of the reason I liked it so much was it was so challenging and it used a whole different skill set than, um, the, you know, the baseball, the basketball that I was playing. And, um, and, you know, because of that, it was like, oh, this is really like, this is hard, you know, and, and that there was something about that that I really uh, enjoyed. And, and so I think, you know, playing lots of sports and not always being the best on the team and learning what it feels like to 
be a support player coming off the bench, you know, leading from the bench instead of leading on the field. Um, and to, you know, have all those different coaching experiences as well, right? You might have a great coach that you love. And then, you know, I loved my softball coach. He was awesome. And then I had, I moved into Little League and played on a baseball team. And gosh, the coach was just totally hardcore. And it was like, he just would like, you know, yell at us. And, and I was just like, ooh, you know, I'm not sure I like this. And, <laughs> and so I think all of those are experiences though, right? You learn, like you learn how to deal with that. You learn how to persevere. You learn how to get what you can from that you learn how to get stronger so that he's not just crushing you every time. And so, um, yeah, I just think there's so much from character development that you learn. And it, the other thing is playing lots of sports teaches you, it grows your overall athleticism. You know, when you're just playing one sport, you don't learn as much about your body and how your body works and moves and all that. So, yeah. No, it's it's great. I love that. And I, I definitely love the idea. Someone just put lead from the bench. <laughs> Classic. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, I think that's true. Like, you, it's just like in life, you're gonna have to try a lot of different experiences, you may as well get used to doing something you're not necessarily naturally talented at. Like you said, you had to work hard at volleyball. And I think that's an important part of the of the journey that you need to learn about is, it's important to learn how to work hard at something and get better and not just go to the things that you're, you know, amazing at and, and never try to, to take on a new challenge. So thank you for that. And I know we're wrapping up on our time here. So I want to ask what's coming up with you guys at Every Kid Sports? How can people get involved in some of the things you're doing? I know you gave us a little snippet earlier in one of your uh, answers, but tell us more. <laughs> yeah, so um, we are, uh, yeah, open nationwide. We have, uh, you know, money available for low income kids. Um, I would love anybody who, you know, knows of a family that's struggling and, and maybe they're in that situation where they're only allowing, you know, one of their kids at a time to play, you know, that they know that this is available. Um, it's super easy for parents to apply five to 10 minutes, depending upon their computer skills. They can do it on their phone. They can do it on a computer. Um, they can even just go to the library if they don't have a phone or a computer, you know, available to them. And, um, and it, yeah, it's just super simple. They just need to show their enrollment document in a government um, assistance type of program. So that could be SNAP, WIC, or um, Medicaid. And um, we try and make it super easy. They end up getting a, a debit card that they can use to register just like everybody else. And um, yeah, so the biggest thing right now is just getting the word out uh, mm -hmm. to more families and organizations and just letting them, letting them know this is available. Um, and you know we we you know we've got money right now, but it's only going to help you know so many kids, and there's so many kids that need help. So we're always looking for you know donations and fundraisers, and and uh, you know we we have a, a young man who uh, is turning 13, and he had his bar mitzvah, and he is ra he's raised twenty thousand dollars already for us. Oh my and goodness! Amazing. He set his goal at eighteen thousand, and when he set his goal at eighteen thousand, we were like, what? <laughs> and he's blown past that and now he's raised 25,000. And so if his story can inspire somebody else to like, you know, do a fundraiser, we have another guy who's an older guy and he's worked in IT and in tech and he's always wanted to be a, an ump. And um, he's actually training to be an ump and he's turning 50, forgot 54, 55, whatever. He's running basic, he's running laps around a, a baseball field uh, for his birthday and he's doing it as a fundraiser for us. So. Um, oh, yeah, awesome. lots of ideas of, of ways that people can, can give back without it coming right out of your, you know, your own pocket. So, yeah, absolutely. And where can people stay engaged with you guys? Um, your website, social handles, like what's the best way for them to learn more and, and find ways to donate? Yeah. So, um, our website for sure, it's everykidsports.org. Um, we're on Instagram, uh, every kid sports. We're on Twitter, every kid sport, <laughs> anywhere you go, any, you know, <laughs> all those it's, uh, it's just every kid sports. So. Awesome. Well, Natalie, thank you so much. I'm so excited to hear you guys are, are doing so many great things and the impact you're making is really important. So thank you for all the work you're doing. Thanks for taking a time out with us here. And I hope everyone watching now and tuning in later will get a lot out of this. We really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in and we will see you next time on Time all Out right. with Tackle What's Next. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.